Very, very interesting topic and a biblical one at that. We have nine different scriptures to go over. Um, the official definition of the unicorn is, well, official. My definition. That's not official. The biblical, it's sorry, it's a biblical animal typically represented as a horse with a single straight horn out of its head, utilized in magic for the soul through meditation, pre-life purpose, ascension, self-love, imagery, channeling, focus, and confidence amongst your enemies. Um, it's commonly compared to an oxen or a rhino, um, but the actual first, excuse me, the first original um, representation, or documentation rather, that we have of the unicorn comes from a Greek historian, not actually from Greek mythology, which is really interesting. And um, basically, I can get... It's okay. Look, mommy's gonna turn on your driving. Oh, look at that. Look at all the shiny buttons. Okay. I actually have his name here on my phone. I didn't write it down earlier. Um, but uh, let's find it here. Um, St Stasius was a Greek doctor and uh, he was a historian as well. In 4th century BCE, he was traveling through Persia or modern day Iran and he heard tales of a single horned wild ass roaming the eastern part of the world. So that's the first documentation we actually have of unicorns. Yeah, is that your toy? I'm sorry if he's loud, but I don't have a babysitter today. Um, that's actually the first documentation we have of a unicorn. Um, otherwise, there has been counts for um, very large creatures, which we'll talk about later, um, that were about 30,000 years ago. Um, they've unfortunately gone extinct, but um, some compare, like some are wondering maybe this is the creature they're talking about as a unicorn, but we'll go through that. First of all, we're going to discuss um, one of the first places we can find it in the Bible. Um, I want everyone to go to Job, if you have your Bibles with you. We're going to go to Job 39, verse 9. And there's some interesting comparisons taking place here from Job. Job 39, verse 9. Yeah. Hey, Weston. Oh, you tell him. Yeah, you tell him. He's learned the art of slamming things. It's his new favorite thing to do. Yeah. Oh, boy. So if we go to 39 verse 9, um, and I'm looking at this in different um, scriptures, but um, one of them says, will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will it stay by your manger at night? Can you hold it to the furrow with a harness? Will it till the valleys behind you? Um, another reading of that is, will the wild buffalo condescend to serve you? Volunteer to spend the night in your barn? Can you imagine hitching your plow to a buffalo? and getting him to till your fields. Now, um, the word that they're specifically looking at here that they're translating to oxen, I'll just find it here. Because um, if you actually read this in the King James, it says, um, the one thing that King James has a bit different, <laughs> it says, um, Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Um, and uh, let me just get that word open. Oh, you found my headphones again, hey? Oh, shoot, he pulled them out of my head. Can I have it back? Here, how about... Oh, what about this? Just don't swallow it, okay? Here, look at this, look at this, look at this. There you go. Don't, hey, don't. You're a little brat. He just smiles at me. <laughs> so the word that we're looking at here that translates to uh, unicorn, I'll find it here for you, is rem. Um, and this is a Hebrew term. And yeah, some people refer it to the oxen or some form of antelope or the Greek term for unicorn. Um, and there's different figurative 
areas where this is being used. Um, it's also mentioned in Psalm, so we'll go over there. Psalm 22, verse 21. And the reason why they, it's usually compared to an oxen is they wonder that if, like when the unicorns are depicted, they're usually depicted sideways. So they're wondering, oh, well, maybe it has the one horn because we can only see the one 2D side of it. So the other horn isn't showing. That's an option. So Psalm 22, verse 21. I need to go over a page. Um, actually, interesting. All of my scriptures, it goes by bulls or um, oxen. But in the King James Version, it says... Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the unicorn. So it's talking about unicorns as an aggression, as an aggressive species. Um, and that's why it's also commonly associated with the rhino, like coming to charge at you. And the ancient unicorn that eventually led to the, um, the evolving state of the rhinos, is they believe that the horn was probably higher up on the head, so then they could go like that instead of using it on their face, um, where it is right now. <laughs> but um, it, it, they believe to it has gone extinct about thirty thousand years ago, and that's where the whole um, idea of the unicorn being more of a rhino, because it's a charging, it's an aggressive animal that comes at you. Oh, we found something to bang. Perfect. <laughs> now we're going to go to Psalm 92, verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10. Alrighty, dighty. Um, oh, that's Psalm 91. Um... There's one where it says, you have exalted my horn like that of a unicorn. Fine oils have been poured upon me. Um, so you have made me as strong as the wild unicorn. You have anointed me with the finest oil. And once again, some different scriptures talk about oxen, not, or a bison. Um, it doesn't mention unicorn in all different scriptures, like in the different translations, I mean. Um, and in Deuteronomy, that's another scripture where we see the unicorn being mentioned. Actually, you know what? Let's go to Numbers first. Numbers 23. This is actually, sorry, this is where that interesting comparison is happening here. God is actually being compared to the strength of a unicorn. And this is 23 verse 22. God brought them out of Egypt. They have, they, God is referred to as a they actually in the scripture they have the strength of a unicorn there is no divination against jacob no evil omens against israel um another one says um for god brought them out of egypt for them he is as strong as a unicorn um another one says uh god brings them out of egypt he is strength like a wild ox um, so it's interesting that we see some comparisons with God and a unicorn. Hello, Helen. Hello, Raleigh. Um, and also Numbers 24, verse 8, it pops up again. Numbers 24, verse 8. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox, or they have the strength of a unicorn. They devour hostile nations and break their bones into pieces. With their arrows, the arrows they pierce them. Like a lion, they crouch and lie down, like a lioness who dares to rouse them. May those who bless you be blessed, and those who curse you be cursed. Um, and uh, there is a few different theories. We'll just go over one more scripture before I get into the theories here. But there's a few different theories as to what happened to the unicorns. Are they still around? Um, are they hiding like the dragons are? Uh, or did they even exist? Is this a figment of our imagination? Or is it more like the rhino or the ox? Is it something that was just um, misconstrued through time? But let's look at first Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Um, and this is talking about... Um, let's see here. And Joseph, about Joseph. So this is about the different, um, hang on, sorry. 
Uh, so this is God talking specifically about Joseph, actually. And um, he says, In majesty, J uh, Joseph is like a firstborn bull. His horns are the horns of a wild ox. With him he will gore the with them he will gore the nations, even those at the end of the earth. Which is true. He had a lot of power um, when he was assigned um, a second to Pharaoh. Um, and uh, in other scriptures, it says, Joseph has the majesty of a young unicorn. He has the horns of a unicorn. He will gore at distant nations, driving them to the ends of the earth. This is my blessing for the multitude of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh. Um, so let's talk about a few different theories. Um, first of all, there is a, actually an ancient, not ancient, there's an Irish folk song that the unicorns drowned in the flood. And... Um, uh, basically the song goes that God created these beautiful unicorns and they were so beautiful but they were so mischievous and frivolous and naive and um, when uh, when it was time for Noah to gather the animals in the song it states that Noah tried to get the unicorns onto the ark because God specifically said don't forget my unicorns but they were playing Sally Sally games is how the lyrics go and uh, unfortunately, they drowned because they were being too silly and thought they had all the time in the world and didn't make it on the ark. Now, that's one song that was written probably only a few decades ago. Um, and it's an Irish hymn, like an Irish folk song, mostly for kids. I remember we actually sang it in school <laughs> back when you could sing that kind of stuff in school. Um, so there's the theory that they drowned in the flood. However, this is untrue due to biblical mentions of the unicorn after the flood. So let's go through that together. Um, we'll go first to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. 34, verse 7. And once again, as usual, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. I'll slow down. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 34 verse 7. And the wild oxen will fall with them, the bull calves and the great bulls. Their land will be drenched with blood, and the dust will be soaked with fat. And then in the King James, it says, um, and the wild unicorn will fall with them. The unicorns and their great bulls, their land will be drenched with blood, and the dust will be soaked with fat. So that's talking about judgment against the nations. Um, especially judgment on Edom, on Basra, etc. And then, oh, uh, there's also one I missed in Psalms. Psalms 29, verse 6. I'm doing a lot of hopping. In Vicious, with that song as a kid, the story of that tape was the two Sandmen delivering drinks. Oh, interesting! Okay. I think I just had it on CD. And I don't remember what the context was. I just remember the song. And I remember singing it in school. And I remember, like, the different hand, the hand things for the alligators, the humpty back camels. Uh, Psalm 29, verse 6. Uh, oh, that's Proverbs. I'm like, that's not talking about unicorns. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Psalms 29. Okay, 29 verse 6. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild unicorn, or like a young wild ox, or like wild goats. That's another version. Oh, Issachar is a strong bull. Thank you, Raleigh. I missed that one. So, um, where exactly... Did the unicorns go then if they did not die in the flood, <laughs> like the Irish song talks about? Well, um, a lot of mystics believe that they left to the seventh or and the fifth dimension. Now, if you remember from our talks on dragonology, uh, dragons are also in the fifth dimension. And um, they, they went there most likely due to change, climate change, humans being horrible, because we're good at that. Um, Siberian unicorns, which are the um, ascend or the ascendants the um, excuse me 
What's the ancestors? That's what I'm saying. The ancestors to the rhino disappeared 29 to 36,000 years ago. We have found fossils of them, um, and they were kind of fuzzy, but they were mostly found in Siberia. And uh, they believe that they went fully extinct due to the loss of grass in that area. Kids, dogs, good night, sleep time. Cool. Cool. Yes, fifth and seventh heaven, exactly. The fifth and seventh dimension. Um, and another reason could be because they were hunted down due to the fact that unicorns' blood and horns are very sacred and very precious all throughout different cultures and, of course, through witchcraft. Um, and it was believed that only virgins or young children could see the children, or sorry, could see the unicorns due to the fact that they had unmetalled blood that wasn't mixed with other people's DNA and they had pure hearts. So, but nowadays it's not believed, like it's not the same. Um, mostly children or just people with pure hearts. Um, good intentions, good qualities, good people with good energy where the unicorns feel safe usually appear. I actually know someone that claims they saw, they've been seeing unicorns since they were just a child. Um, this is further down in the States, which makes sense because she actually is um, an equine therapist. Um, so she's very associated with horses and stuff in general. Um, and it is believed that they are starting to come back physically and spiritually because the frequency of the earth and humanity is rising. Thankfully, we're in the age of Aquarius now. Things are changing. Things are going. Um, we're starting to recognize who we are and who we need to be. So the unicorns are coming to help us with that. And um, the unicorns specifically seek those with high energy and fruits of the spirit. If they show fruits of the spirit and they have high energy, unicorns are naturally attracted to those people. There's also theories of unicorns being connected to Atlantis. Uh, it's believed that um, Atlantis was about 260,000 years ago, if you go by the legends and conspiracies. It ended in about 12,000 or 10,000 AD. Um, there were crystal skulls, essentially, like the ones from Indiana Jones, that kept vibrations um, of Atlantis, and it would keep the island above water. And they protected the city. The different crystals were for different things. And um, since then, um, they've been sent to different locations, and that's why Atlantis sunk, because they felt as though Earth was no longer capable or willing to be on the high frequency that they needed to be. Um, but unicorns assisted the civilizations there, according to legend, and they also assist in self-love, specifically. Um, even the library monst monstrum says creatures used to exist until the sons of Noah came. Interesting, okay. But yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, different associations with Atlantis. There's also a lot of associations, of course, with Fae. The Fae are very closely associated with them. Some legends even stay, say that the Fae created unicorns. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I definitely think that Fae work with unicorns, 100%. Um, and uh, since Atlantis disappeared, there's only been two crystal skulls actually discovered um, from Atlantis. They haven't been able to find any more. Um, but yeah, um, when it comes to working with a unicorn, how exactly does that work? How do we go about working with unicorns? Well, uh, the first thing is to start exhibiting fruits of the spirit. Start raising your energy and vibration. If you have negative energy or negative space, they're not going to want to show up at all. And they do not really like, I shouldn't say they don't like city limits, but they're less prone to show up around city limits. Um, that being said, they can hop in and out of dimensions as they want. And this is the same as Fae, right, and dragons. So they can shift and show themselves to whoever they wish. So just because you live in a city, don't be afraid that you might not ever see one. Because they could very well show up anyway. Yeah, let's get the thing out of your mouth. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> your butt. Your butt. Oh, you took it out. Okay. Oh, are you hungry? Okay, so, um, yeah. Any questions? Sorry, I'm going to... Quickly breastfeed him because he's fussy. There you go. Any questions regarding unicorns? But yeah, sorry, when it comes to working with them, meditating is good if you'd like to meet a unicorn. Um, there's certain vibrations and frequencies you can find even on YouTube that will help you um, synchronize with the fifth and seventh dimension. I can help with that. Atlantis could also be the Garden of Eden. Mountains were. Actually, that would make sense because there's also a lot of legends around Lilith and Cain from Atlantis. But yeah, I haven't done much either 
more I'm more into the Avalon side of things, so I haven't looked much into Atlantis to be honest. Um, but yeah, hundred percent legendary creatures. Um, so if if you're looking for hardcore evidence, the only hardcore evidence we necessarily have of them would be the Siberian unicorns. Um, otherwise. We just go by what people say and what legends say. Um, also, fun fact, it is uh, the unicorn that's resembling a horse with a, with a horn on its head is um, the national animal for Scotland. And this is because it's not only purity and truth and honest, but uh, it's also a symbol for chivalry, bravery, cur courage, and especially courage in battle. So Scotland really related to that. But we have seen unicorns, much like dragons, all throughout many different cultures, including as early as the Babylonian times. So um, I think when something appears many times in history, in many different cultures, that's usually something to look at and keep in mind. That being said, I have not personally worked. I can't wear these headphones. <laughs> he keeps taking them off. But like um, that being said, I have not worked personally with unicorn. Um, and there's still a lot to learn about them uh, because it just seems like in the last few decades they've been showing up. Like I think as only as early as the um, maybe even just the 70s, we haven't really seen Christ or Christians, yeah. witches in general, or Christian witches in general, working with unicorns until this point. <laughs> and some of the first few people are published through, um, I can never say it right, Lelwyn or Le uh, Lewin Publishers. Um, and you can find some topics there. They have some different books. They have oracle deck cards, all sorts of stuff that help you connect to unicorns. Also, unicorns like sparkly things. Um, they like to feel safe in general. They don't usually like bright lights, despite the fact that we depict them with neon sometimes. But, um, yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. That was all I was able to really find on unicorns. And other than that, I didn't really have much else to say on the subject. Yeah. There you go. Look, what's this? What is this? Hey, what's this? What is that? Oh, no, he's not into that at all. But yeah, that was kind of all I had to say. So if there are no questions, we can leave it at that. It is an untapped field of magic that people are still learning and still studying. Oh, you dropped it. I'm giving him a bit of banana muffin. No problem. Sorry it wasn't as much as I usually have. It was much easier to find things on vampires than it was unicorns, that's for sure. But um, there's still a lot there. That makes strong Issachar descendant because I believe the Testament of 12 talks about how Issachar could be represented as an ox. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Oh. oh, boy. Do you want some more? Do you want some more? But yeah, um, much like everyone is um, usually known to have their own dragon usually people are also known to have their own unicorn. So if you um, if you feel like a unicorn is calling you or trying to get a hold of you, well then you might be right. Um, and also there's a lot of Im imagery of like fae riding unicorns, angels riding unicorns, that sort of thing. Like as if they're a holy celestial um, calvary. <laughs> so yeah, you want some more? I have a really fun video of Weston eating french fries from the back seat. It's hilarious. I'll have to send it to whoever wants to see it. But anyway, that's all I had to say. So I think I will leave it here for now. If you think of any questions or anything like that, let me know. But thanks for tuning in. Um, next week, I'm either discussing werewolves or sirens, like mermaids. Whichever one you guys prefer. So anyways, love you guys lots. Have a great rest of your week. If you haven't checked out the new website, go to EdenCircle.com. We got it up and running. Tell your friends. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, tonight, hopefully, I'm going to start working on some lilac oil to fundraise for the church. Oh, and because of the fundraising we did with dandelion oil, that's what we were used. That's what was used to um, put up the website. So thank you to all those that have helped out with that. But anyways, much love. Blessed be. Have a great night.